Can you see if I'm on? Hi everyone. Just getting my thing set up here so that I can stream and hoping you guys are all good. Yay, it's on, yay. So I hope everybody's doing well and I am getting ready to um, I've been working on my junk mail journal, the little paint your junk mail thing that we've been working on. And I am, I'm hoping you guys all painted your junk mail too. Let me know if you guys are here and um, let me know if you guys are here with me. And so I don't know how your week has been going. I have had... I don't know. Has has anybody just had one of those days like where you, where it starts out great and then everything you do you knock it over? Right before I like knocked over this huge thing of paper clips, so I have them all over my floor. <laughs> so shout out and let me know if you're here. I can't wait to can't wait to hear what you guys. Um, my week has been been fairly good I mean you know just busy it, it seems like every week is that way I'm sure it's that way for you guys too so I have been um, I have been working on a bunch of different journals I have been working on my collage journal I've been working on some altered books I'm a little bit into the altered book thing right now uh, just really fun and focusing on altered books and you know, it's just it. I, I'm I'm a little obsessed with altered books, and I'll show you the few that I'm that I'm I'm working in, and see what you guys think. Anyway, give me one more second. I'm just trying to share uh, this link with my with a Facebook group that I belong to, and and that's all I'm doing. So shout out and say hi if you're here. Let me know what you guys have been up to. Somebody told me they got a bunch of snow yesterday. I, I, I want to say was that in, it had to be on the East Coast somewhere. And at, were asking me about my weather and I was saying to them it has been, um, it has been sort of overcast and rainy here, which, you know, we live on an island. We need the rain. So anyway, I hope you guys are all doing good, and I'm going to show you the book I'm working on. Just give me one little second. I think I'm almost done here, and then, yay! Okay, so let me, let me get myself all plugged in. And hi, Bridgeline! Woohoo! Hello from England! Awesome! Where in England do you live? Where in England do you live, Bridgeline? So this is the this is the little junk mail journal that I've we've all been working on together that I where I painted my junk mail. I made, I made the cover from a a small hardbound book and honestly I can't tell you what the book was, but if you guys go back and watch my crackle painting video, it will tell you. It's it's um I think anyway it had just a little it was a little the cover was just paper you know like covered with uh, chipboard cover with paper and then the spine it was a novel I think of some sort and the novel and then the the spine was a book cloth and it was a red book cloth and so what I did was I painted it did a little faux finish on it and um, then I went back in and. After I taken the pages out, I used my very favorite tape. Hi, Debbie. I used my very favorite, which is Gorilla Tape. And if you don't want to see this, you can cover it up with paper. And I do that often, but, you know, this is a junk journal for myself, and I didn't really find it really mattered. Somebody gifted me some books of upholstery samples. And, uh... I made two pockets 
separate obviously and so just three pieces you know cut them with some pinking shears get your fabric shears you know so that the fabric wouldn't fray sewed three sides and then now and I glued it down with a tacky a thick PVA tacky glue I like Aileen's tacky glue but as long as it's a thick PVA glue it'll work and I glued it down and let it set up now Prior to that, I poked a hole and I sewed my button in elastic because on the inside I have the thread that sewed the boat on um, captured. I'm sorry, I, for all of you that know I got a new little puppy and she is she tries to be quiet but she's not 100%. She's great though. We're very, she's a very sweet little dog. So, you know, my thought was that I'm not going to sew directly into the spine of this book. I'm going to use a twine binding. And so for the twine binding part, today we're going to sew in the signatures that we've made and um, then I'm going to twine bind them in. But I'll show you the signature. So this is the cover. So if you guys want to go back and make along, it's, it's so simple and um, you know, it's not a difficult process at all. These are, this is the junk mail. So what I've done since I last saw you guys is I added all these tabs to the book. And I have to say, I'm super in love. I, I like the book even more now with the little tabs sewn in and with the little tabs glued on. And I'm going to show you guys how I made the tabs. And they're so super simple. And you don't need a punch, but I did use one. But I'll show you what I did. And this is all from junk mail. All these different colors, they came from going to show you let me see they came from a credit card advertisement so what I did was I cut these out and stuck them through my punch and hi Elaine you guys shout out and tell me where you're from I know Brigillian's from England where are you from Debbie where are you from Elaine I live here in Hawaii for those of you that are new and 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 aren't really so familiar with me so you know when you get your pile of junk mail this is like one of those credit card offers that says you know you can pick your card or whatever so you know normally that would just be thrown in the trash but I thought when I saw it I thought oh this is gonna be perfect for my for my tabs and I'll just show you how I did it and I used some other junk mail besides that for my tabs but I just thought it was I liked it anyway so I'm using, this is a one inch scallop punch, and this is from, I'll tell you the brand, EK. This is an EK uh, one, inch, one inch scallop punch. Now you can use any type of punch that you want to use, or you can cut them freehand, okay? So this is what I did, so that I would be able to have them go over the end. What I did was I pu pulled it up. Do, can you see there's like a little space between at the very top I didn't let it go all the way to the top let me see if I can zoom in so you guys can see can you see so I I didn't make it go all the way to the top and then I just punched it now let me just show you how it comes out so what it does when you don't go to all the way to the top of your punch is that it keeps it connected so this is my tabs. This is what I've made. Oh, you're hi Phaedra. You're from Texas. You know, I'm originally from Texas. And Ash, you're from Oregon. Awesome. And Debbie from Southern California. Woohoo! And this hi Ellen. Yeah, nice to see you too. Um, so this just kind of gives you some ideas from and where are you from in London? Hang on, let's see Bridgelman. I'm probably saying your name wrong. Is it Brigeline? Brigeline? Brighton, southeast coast, around 75-ish miles from downtown, from down from London. Oh, awesome! I've been to England. I have. I don't think I've been to the southeast coast of England. I've been to Manchester, London. You know, I can't remember. It's been so long. Anyway, so the the point I'm even sharing with you about how I made the tabs and how colorful they are is they were all this part of this credit card ad. Now you can also do the same sort of thing with your, with, you know, the inside of your pad. I love these, um, what do you want to call it? 
security envelopes. I love them. So I've cut these up to you to make tabs too. And I think these make really nice, um, really cool little tabs as well. So I'm using a one inch punch. You could you could draw it on your own. You don't need a punch to do it, but and you don't need a die cutting machine. I get a lot of uh, of things where people say, you know, I've seen you use die cuts and I don't have a die cutting machine. Hey Shirley. So if you you can use it with any punch and you could do them bigger punches as well. If you have a butterfly punch, I have all those, but I just don't have them right close by. Just the key is, I'm going to show you again, see where you just don't, you don't make it go all the way to the end. You leave a space so that it joins it, okay? And then punch it, and then, so you get these really cool little tabs. So what I do with my junk mail after I made these tabs, which I'm sort of addicted to making tabs and tags, and I don't know why I like all that, but I just do, okay? So... What I did was, is I went back to my junk, my signatures the way they were, right, the way they're going to fit in the book, and I just started at one end, and I just, you know, started putting the tabs. Now, I didn't put it on every single piece of junk mail, and I could go back and do that later, but I just wanted it, really, it was more for aesthetic reasons for the inside of my journal. Because when it sticks out of the book, I think that it is, um, I like the way it looks. And you guys might like yours differently, and I'm not saying that this is like the only way to do it, but for me, I like the way it looks. I mean, what do you guys think? I like the way it looks inside the book. And I think I'm going to have a lot of fun you know, using it and, and so you can imagine if you wanted to collect all these security envelopes, I mean, I did put a few security envelope tabs in there, um, but you can imagine if you wanted to, uh, you know, use just security envelopes that how cool that would look. So yeah, I like the colorful ones too. And so that's, I'm just showing you like, I just used my junk mail because the whole thing, the whole, this whole project was just about using your junk mail. It was just about painting your junk mail. And I also went back and I used some of the painted bits of junk mail that I had. There, there are a few tabs made out of that as well. So I just wanted to, you know, just show you like, that's what I did. Now I did manage to keep trying to keep all my tabs in, a, in one little place because they are small and you know, could you could lose them? You know, this this book may need a few more pockets in it. I haven't quite decided. I also haven't decided exactly what I'm gonna, you know, if I'm gonna use it as a glue book or if I'm gonna use it as a, um, you know, I haven't I haven't really totally decided like what I'm gonna use it as. If it's gonna be a, a glue book or if I'm gonna write in it like a journal or. If I'm going to just use it as like a painting, you know, I mean, there's no, there's no right or wrong in junk journaling, so you can use it and do with it any way you want, but, you know, that's where I am. So tell me what you guys are working on. I want to hear all about what you're working on. I mean, I've, you guys see what I'm working on. And tell me about your weeks. I mean, what have you guys done this week? For me, I have been, um, okay, so are you guys familiar with the, the KonMari method of organizing? Um, is anyone here familiar with that? So I have been focusing on trying to clean out my space. I live in a really small little house and and I love my house, but I have collected way too much stuff. And I don't know if any of you guys can relate to that, but I've collected 
I'm not talking about like proper scrapbooking supplies that you buy at the store, although I probably have too much of that as well. But I have collected like a little too much You know, just like extras and stuff. And people know that I'm a recycle, uh, that I make recycled art. Not just these journals. I do glass art. If you guys saw my studio space, I promise one day I'll give you guys a tour of it. But it's so small. And it extends inside and outside of my house. I, um, I have a glass studio in my garage that I work in. And I have couple of kilns out there and I'm also a jewelry artist so I have like you know proper metal smithing part set up and then now my my crazed book art um, obsession that I have going on right now so I'm trying to do that method so has anybody done that a couple of you have a couple of projects going on hello from Alabama oh awesome yeah I love tabs too Phaedra living in Hawaii is lovely, but I have to tell you there is some drawbacks to it. Like we don't have any big craft stores or any big supply stores like you guys have on the mainland. And um, the elements don't always love everything that you work with. Like because you're covered, we're surrounded by the ocean the whole time. My tools often rust and it's not a hundred percent without I mean, I'm sure there's drawbacks to everywhere, but it's not 100%. I just want to go ahead and glue this little pocket in while I'm thinking about it. Um, so anyway, back to my organizing. So this friend of mine gave me this book. This book. It's about organizing. And she swears by this organizing system, this KonMari organizing system. Now, I'm sure you can use it for anything that you want to do it for, but, you know, so the whole premise is what brings you joy? Oh, you know the KonMari? <laughs> it clashes a bit with collecting art supplies. Yes! Oh, good, Bridgeline, I'm not the only one! Okay, so the whole premise is you, it, you have to ask yourself as you go through and sort this stuff, what sparks, does this spark joy? Okay. So the ridiculous, and you watch her, and if you go on YouTube and you see any, any videos that she does, she's this beautiful, eloquent Japanese lady. She's gorgeous. She's probably like, you know, 20 years old. No, she looks, she's just gorgeous. She's, I think she's older than that. But anyway, the whole point is she, you're, you're supposed to, sort things and you in in the first thing that you do is you do your closet well i already did my closet i mean you live in the tropics you don't really need a lot hi hi rose you didn't miss me it, you didn't miss me um so the first thing you do is your clothes well that wasn't a big deal okay so the idea is you take everything and you pile it all, everything out of your closet and you put it in one space and then you go through each piece lovingly and you ask yourself, does it spark joy? And if it sparks joy, you keep it. And if it doesn't, you honor it and you thank it for being in your life and then you let it go, right? Okay, the clothes, the clothes were not a big deal. The clothes and the shoes, not a big deal. Okay, the second part, are you ready for this? Books. Okay. I collect so many books it's ridiculous okay for the projects that I do for the art journaling that I make for the art journals that I make for the junk journals that I make so let's just say I don't think that she would appreciate my level of you know because it's the most ridiculous things like okay uh, I don't have anything right around me but you know you guys know let me see if I can find that book that one that I showed you guys in my last live stream that I found. Oh, here it is. Hang on. Okay. Let me show it to you. I love this book. Okay. I'm in love with this book. Hang on. I'll be right back. Two seconds. Okay. Here is the book that here's my most recent thrift store acquisition. Okay. I love this book. Okay. I love collecting books with unique covers. Okay. 
So forget it. It's like, so the second part of the whole system, you're supposed to go through and let go of your books. And does it spark your joy? Well, honestly, yes, it sparks joy. These books spark joy. I'm also working on, I also love these Funk and Wagnall old reference encyclopedias, okay? I have, somebody gifted me some. Okay, yes, I'm making books out of them. I'm making alternate books out of them. Yes, they spark joy, okay? They spark joy. And, you know, so I'm, I'm working on making this altered book. So oh, wait, it looks big, books your weak point. Okay. Hang on, let me read what you guys are writing me. Okay, what a beautiful, I know, it's a great book, isn't it, Ash? And it wasn't, and it's not like some rare book. And if you guys go on Amazon, you could buy one. I don't, I think they're like, you can probably find them for a dollar on Amazon, but it's the shipping. It's called A Book of North American Birds. But I love the cover, like, I'm so excited to make, um, I'm so excited to make a junk journal from this. I'm, like, super excited about it. Okay, and my, and as far as my Funk and Wagnalls go, like, that's what this book is made out of. That, those Funk and Wagnalls, those, those dictionaries, I faux finished the front of this one. You know, I did my, my faux painting on it, and, you know, and I made my, my you know my little accordion file book out of it and so no I don't want to throw them away and and so okay I'm failing at the Kanmari method just just know that okay let me read what you wrote okay Brigitte you've run a couple workshops on brown envelopes in the past has anyone else noticed the beautiful gentle nuances of the color of them all great to collage that people think I'm not for collecting them you know what I totally Rigeline you and I are soul sisters okay so now you get why like the inside of the credit card thing okay the inside of the credit card bit that I showed you guys where it's showing you now you see why I had kept that junk mail that particular junk mail because I'm cutting it up and I am making um tabs with it. So I'm failing at the Kanmari method. I'm so failing at the Kanmari method of I am. So let me see. Um, oh, I'll show you guys how to do that. I'll show you how to do the, the, the I've done it in a couple videos, but I'll certainly re, um, go over it again. Let's see. Brown envelopes. You know, Brigeline, we don't, I don't know if we have the same brown envelopes. I know I've seen some other YouTubers that have beautiful brown envelope. Uh, in fact, I asked somebody in New Zealand if she would send me some. She and I were doing a swap, but she said they aren't so easy to come by anymore. But I can totally relate. I'm, I'm that way with the, with the security envelopes. I love them. Um, you, wait, wait. You're from... Hi, Jennifer. Hey, Jennifer's writing that she's heard of the Kanmari method, but she paid $100 for a YouTube woman named Alexandra's Organizing System. Ha, and I hear about the systems that you're talking about. You know what? The, the Kanmari thing is just, you know what it is for me is I live in a very small home, okay? And I live with, I have children, you know? I have three daughters and two stepsons and... You know, we don't all, we have one, I have one daughter that's, um, still lives at home and the others live off, but they all come back. And so for me, I've sort of like taken over all the spaces. So, but in the second method, the first thing you're supposed to do is clear out your clothes, like I said, and then the second part is your books. Okay. And then the third is your papers. Okay. So forget it. I'm already failing at, at number two and the paper thing, because if I'm finding joy in credit card bits, you can imagine. I'm not, let's just say, I'm struggling. <laughs> but it, you know, I guess I just have to be where I am. So back to our junk mail. Oh, do you, you're afraid of filling? You're not, I'm sorry, I'm trying to read too. Let's see. You're not feeling because it sparks joy for you. Yes, it does spark joy, okay? But 
Oh, Brazilian, I would love some of your the brown envelopes, and I'll happily send you some stuff to England, too. It does spark joy. But then what? at what point do you have to say, I have enough joy? Okay, you're a paper hoarder, Jennifer. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So, anyway, now you guys know. So, who has been making along with me with their with their with <laughs> with their junk mail? Can you imagine? Can you imagine if I saw the the lady, the Kanmari lady? Can you imagine if I showed her my junk mail stash? She would be like, she would think that I'm insane. She would be like, okay, you've lost your mind, and that's that. So, for those of you that have just okay, you've been cleaning. You've been cleaning that way your whole life. I also taught my children to. I never knew I had a name for it. My kids call it, oh no, mom's mad cleaning. <laughs> you know, Debbie, she's kind of an interesting lady. Um, she's really young, this Japanese lady. And I'm not that familiar with her. Just this book. And then after I got the book, after my friend gave me the book, um, you think it was a big hint that my friend gave me the book because she came to my house and saw the, all the... Um, Your kids are all grown and married. Oh, well, hey, if they do it, it's awesome. I'm not so familiar with her, but she does have a point. She she really just talks, and she honors the space that you live in, and she and she just shows you how to go through and find the things that see that you that bring you joy in your life, and surround yourself with that, and the things that don't bring you joy to let go of. And it's also kind of a fun way to say, like, okay, I've used this, and I've worn this, or I'm keeping this out of obligation or all that. It's just I'm failing madly because of my love for books. You have a box labeled Little Bits for all the tiny bits of colored paper. Oh, I think that's great. You know, I promise that I will get my space cleaned up really enough to show you guys soon. My oldest daughter is here. She's she's here, um, staying with me for a little bit on her and on her way to uh, to before she moves to Japan. And she just shakes her head. She just is like she doesn't throw my stuff out, but I can tell like she she's you know I overwhelm myself. You know it. Anyway, my family doesn't tend to like totally. They're they're all good with it. You've been binge watching my channel for two days. Oh. Oh, thank you, Michelle. Thanks for watching. Ash is saying that she, that you understand because you live in a small house also and give yourself a certain size box and if you don't use it, then I stop saving it until you need more. You know, I, I completely agree. I completely agree. I mean, it, there does need to be some level of, of, of control of stopping yourself and, and all that. And, you know, I'm not going to lie. Obviously, I have an issue. I have a, I have a junk mail, I have a junk, <laughs> junk mail and book issue. Well, thank you for, thank you for binge watching, Michelle. I like to binge watch YouTube too. Yeah, you know what, you're right, Bridgeline. If you, um, then Ash, that's a great point. If you're, if you're, if your space is overflowing, then you're not being creative enough. Okay, I get it. Okay, so what I'm going to show you guys, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to hopefully sew my, I haven't totally finished um, embellishing all the pages, and I don't, as I said, I don't quite know what I'm going to actually do with it, but um, I'm going to sew my signatures together, and then I'm going to twine bind them in, and maybe do a little bit more work. Now, it is easier to work on your addicted, I'm addicted too, okay, Michelle, I have to say, I'm addicted to like... Okay, the things I'm addicted to. I'm addicted to... I love... There's all there's all sorts of YouTube um, videos that I really love. I like the ones in foreign language. Do you ever watch those? They have them in Spanish and in other languages, and I'm not fluent enough in any of them, but I love, I love watching that. Um, I love watching... Oh, I'll post in the vid in the description box. I can't think of her name, but I'm sort of obsessed with her right now. She does these beautiful. Her style is similar to what I aspire to be, and her name used to be 
I think her name was Packer Die, but now it's Diane something. And I love, I love watching her. She makes these beautiful uh, floral, she takes magazine pages of women and she cuts them out and then she makes them into these beautiful pages. And I love her, I love her style. I'll, I'll put her in my description box um, below. I love Ky Kylie Koo is lovely. I, she's I haven't seen any of her videos lately, but um, I like her. I, there's like so many so many people that I love to watch that I feel completely inspired by. Obviously Shannon Green, I love her very much too. There's so many YouTube creative people on YouTube that you feel like yes Diane Fago that's her name yes I love her okay I love her. I love her artwork. I love her aesthetic. I like um, I, I, I like her videos. I haven't I, I, I like that she paints in big blobs of paint which I when I'm painting a, a painting myself that's the way I paint as well. So I really like um, her. Um, I love Betsy Doodle. Have you guys watched Betsy Doodle? She's got such a funny sense of humor and she she is just, I love, she's just lovely. I love her. Um, there's so many wonderful, inspiring YouTube artists out there, and I feel grateful to be part of this community because, you know, as I mentioned to you guys earlier, living in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, you know, you're kind of, I'm kind of on my own doing my own thing. The only thing I want to talk to you about sewing your signatures together is if you were going to sew them and put them, sew them into the book itself, I would say measure, 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 and remeasure. This is a junk mail journal. It's not, you know, I'm just going to do a three hole pamphlet stitch. I'm not going to measure it. I'm not going to go through and measure like every little thing. What I can tell you is that if you are going to sew them in, sew in your signatures, I'm sorry, my desk is a huge mess. Using a phone book, I find is awesome. If you wanted to make well, I guess we could make a template. Let me see. Let me just make a template. We'll just do it together with a template so everybody can see. So, template your, you know, fold, find, you want to, you want to sew your, your, if you're going to do a five hole pamphlet stitch or if you're going to do like multiple signatures and sew them into the back of your book, I would say measure them and do all that but I don't have a ruler here and I'm just going to sort of eyeball it and it doesn't really matter because it's going to be the whole point is to keep your signatures uh, in place it's to keep your pages together right so that's where I'm going to punch them if you have an all this would be a great time to use your all okay so now that I have that in here what I can do is this is pretty thick like some of the pages in here are really thick so, and I also, the one thing you do want to do is label bottom and top. So this is the bottom and this is the top on your template because if you don't do it and you punch a bunch of holes, they're going to miss a line. And what am I missing? You like Shannon? I love Shannon Green. Okay. If, if I lived close enough, I think she would be my BFF. I love Betsy Doodle. She just makes me laugh. I love, I love her sense of humor. I love her, um, uh, there's a lot of YouTube artists that I love, but those are the ones that come off the top of my head. So I've paper clipped my pages together because I wasn't going to take them apart and poke holes, but I'm going to go ahead and take them apart and poke holes just because um, it'll be easy to, to do that with you and then show you how I do it. So you can poke them one at a time or you can poke them all at once or a few at a time. Um, these are sort of cardstocky papers and those are kind of in the middle. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my, you guys, if you could see my space, you would be like, oh my gosh, what are you doing? I, I work on the tiniest table in my space. So the reason I use an old phone book is it's really easy to poke into the holes of uh, the spine of the phone book. It, it works really great. So I'm just going to take and I'm going to poke my, my template all the way through. And this is just a darning needle. Now you can buy book binding needles and stuff like that. I don't necessarily, I don't think it's so necessary, but that's just me. You guys do what moves you. Okay, so that's page one. And then I'm gonna, the second one is not gonna sit in the center. I mean, it's not, it's only gonna be, 
guess I could align it to do the bottom and the middle. I could do that. You know, it's not going to be three holes for this one. It's only going to be two. And this is like one of those really thick cardboardy um, postcards that you get that are in the mail. I, I will hopefully go back and glue on top of this. Your junk mail piles have been getting larger <laughs> because I just ordered a bunch of catalogs. Um, you know what? I ordered, there are some great catalogs to get. Um, what was I going to tell you? What did I get recently? I don't, I don't always get a lot of junk mail catalogs. Um, you know, I think where I live, I don't really, there's not a lot of stuff to shop for. Does that make sense? There's not a lot of there's not a lot of shopping that goes on in my world. There's not a lot of things. So hey, Shell, I meant to tell you I worked on the ironing board. I work, you work on it, Rose. You work on an ironing board. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, I work on. I will show you guys eventually because I have so many different little stations set up in my house. If I get my house organized enough, I'll do a video and show it to you. Otherwise, I can't because it's just like in my garage. I have glass bottles because I told you guys that I make glass art so I make recycled glass art so in my garage I have I go I don't go very often anymore but if I'm making a project I do I used to go to the dump every day when I was working on a specific I make glass curtains from recycled wine bottles there, there's nothing romantic about it so don't get all excited about it but it's just you know, and also I make like wind chimes and that sort of thing. Um, so when I used to make them a lot, when I was really working on them a lot, I would go to the dump almost every day to to gather specific colors of glass. You know, like blue glass wine bottles and different things like that so and my garage has a lot of glass bottles all of their own shelves and then I told you I had a friend that gave me all of these upholstery sample books so they live out in my garage too and I have I also have books out there you guys I can't help but I have books I'm not buying, buying anything from the catalogs you know, using the no, I know exactly what you mean. You love using phone books too. Oh, good. I'm trying to read at the same time. I love catalogs. There's some that I love more than others. Um, and if you guys haven't ordered, I'm in a group on Facebook and somebody told us to order from the Shade Store. That's like a Southern California shade store. Let me see if I can do these all together. I may or may not be able to. It might, it, it's usually easy if it's just regular paper, but some of these things are big and thick. Um, the shade store. Okay, so the shade store is... Okay, I can't do them all at once. See, I was just hoping. The shade. Somebody told us to order from the shade store. Okay, let me see how many I can do at once. And they send you like um, catalog bits for, you know, window treatments, which I, they send you like little samples of, actually send you the samples of the window treatments, which I love. And I tell you, the catalog that they send is amazing. Okay, I love that catalog. I have used that catalog, the Shade Store catalog, because it's just all these bits and pieces of, let me turn the page here. It's just all these bits and pieces of um, shade fabrics and the different colors and, just, and there's very little words in it and the paper quality is amazing. So if I think about it, I'll put the shade store. Although if, if everybody, and they send it to you for free, so, but I don't, you know, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't put it on YouTube, but, but if those of you that want it message me and I'll send you the link to the shade store um, that probably then they might stop 
have to spell my name right. Oh, I'm missing all... Restoration hardware is good? Okay, I haven't done that. Oh, you don't... I haven't done restoration hardware. Um, I used to love getting anthro... When I lived in this on the mainland, I loved getting an anthropology catalog. Did you guys like anthropology catalogs? I loved those. And I like... I love lands and catalogs. They have really great, especially if you like to make borders and you like to make like patterned borders for your journaling pages. The pages that they have where they show you like all the array of sweaters stacked up, that that's a great page too. Those are those are really good for um for that. You just look them up the shade store and, and listen, you can order as many if you order at the shade store, you can order as many samples as you want. I don't know what the limit is, but they send you actual swatches of fabric if you're into that. Or you can just order a catalog if you don't want the fabric part. Um, I am, I like that as well. I'm just trying to think of the other ones that I love. I don't know. I, ha I get through tangent. My sweetheart brought me a catalog home the other day and I have to say I'm going to make a journal out of it and when I do I am going to I will it's from it says it came from New York and it's a, it, it's a photography catalog and he got it for me somebody was throwing it out and um, he brought it home for me and the paper is amazing the quality of the paper first of all the book itself could be a be a journal. Maybe I'll get when one of my kids comes home. Maybe I'll get one of them to go get it for me. Um, but I'm like in love with that. That's a particular fabulous catalog that is definitely worth. And I don't and I don't know where you would buy it. And I don't know because you know we live on an island and a lot of times people bring stuff with them. Okay, now here's the real test. So I'm going to put all my junk mail back in order and put it and line it all back up. That's the test to line your junk mail back up after you've punched all the holes. Now this is a much easier process when you're doing regular paper that's not like all this different ridiculous heavy weights. I mean, most of the time most people aren't going to be sewing these heavy cardboard bits of inside of a inside of a journal, but with me I just I have my own thing going on. I had to let me see if I can find the center. Let me see if I can put it all, close it all together. Please make a video of the process when you do. Okay, wait. What are we talking about? Okay, let me see. I'm impressed these books. Okay, let's do that. Jason Home has a super thick catalog, and it's free as well. Okay, I'm going to look at that. You just got that one too. Okay, Jennifer, what are you asking us to make a process video of? Because I wasn't, I, I can't, I haven't mastered reading and doing um and watching at the same time i haven't mastered that yet so if you wouldn't mind repeating what you're asking us to make a process video of maybe we'll are you making my library pockets okay i'm obsessed with making library pockets i don't know why it seems like maybe i was the librarian in another life probably was. I, I have a thing for pockets and ta t tuck spots, tags, and pockets. I have a thing for and I don't even know why. It seems so ridiculous, but I do. And now I can't see where my center hole is, even though they're all punched in the same place. I, the paper, I can't see it. Hopefully I'll be able to see it from here. And it'll be easy going through everything. Of course not. We have to do them one at a time because it's so thick. Okay. 
Okay, what are you guys... I'm obsessed with library pockets. I don't know why. And I know it seems so silly and ridiculous, but I just am obsessed with them. And... I'm obsessed with making those library pockets. And... You know what? I'm not going to... I just want to put this one on the inside because I can't see where I've poked the holes. And I can see it on this. Oh, awesome! I'm going to put it like this. Let's see if I put it like this. It'll be... Did I line it up? Hopefully I did. Um, I'm obsessed with it too. I don't know why. And it makes no sense at all. And it seems the, the silliest thing ever. But I just am. I'm like so obsessed with it. And let me see what am I doing? I'm so obsessed with library pockets, and I'm also obsessed with tags and tabs. Okay, is anybody else obsessed with tags and tabs as I am? Like, somebody sent me some clothing tags the other day. Oh my god, they were so fabulous! I loved, loved love them. Okay, guys, let me just focus on sewing this together. And You're obsessed with it, too? I guess I didn't poke my holes as clearly as one would hope. Once I get the center one through, it'll be easier. You know what I find? Most of the time I like to sit on the floor and do this. Do you guys ever do that? I like sit on the floor. And then, of course, like I'm stuck down there forever sitting on the floor. And my legs fall asleep. Does anybody else do that? Make their, do their crafting on the floor. And then my kids always go, why do you do that? Then you call one of us to, like, help you because your legs are asleep. My legs fall asleep. I sit on the floor. Our floor is so hard. It always seems like a good idea when I'm doing it. And then... After I've done it for a little while, my my legs are like going, what are you doing to me? Does anybody else do that? Who made books to just hold other tags? Oh, I, I'm that way too. It's so ridiculous. I, I'm like obsessed with tags. I don't know why. I just am. It's so ridiculous. It makes no absolute sense. But I totally love it. And I do it. I have a cork over here, but I don't have it now. Okay, I pushed my needle through. Uh, sorry, you guys. I have. I don't even want to tell you my physical ailments. If I do, then it, then I think it makes it worse. So, anyway, let's just say I'm perfect. <laughs> my hands work perfect. Okay, so you don't want to pull it, you don't want to pull it all the way through, and I usually find a clip and clip it. Oh, that's what happened to me right before I started. So I got this really cool thing of clips, these really cool, I don't know where it is, it's like a tower of clips. Here's the bottom tower. Somebody gave them to me, and they're like totally cool. So like one top of it, this one has this, and I picked it up, and they all went everywhere, and my daughter just had to have a laugh, because that's just... If you ask my family, they call me Lucy, like, as in, I love Lucy. It's ridiculous. So I usually just clip my thread so that I don't lose it, because I will. Because I totally will lose it, because that's just how it goes. And then, once hopefully I can see, oh, I can see the back, the back through it, the back part. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I can see that one. careful when you're doing it not to poke yourself because I've done that. Have you ever done that? Where you're poking it through and it's like so much paper and it's heavy and it's hard and then you poke yourself? Yes, I've done that. I've done that. Okay, let's see. Let's see if I get them all straight. You can't do crafts on the floor because your dog's considered their turf. My little dog thinks that when I'm doing crafting on the floor that she should be crafting too. So it's very sweet. She wants to get in on it. Like earlier when I was sitting on the, I was sitting on the floor sorting. I was trying to sort some, uh, 
actually looking for some fabric bits. I have like a big box of, does anybody else save fabric scraps too? Like I have these fabric scraps and they're intense and I love them, but they're all from all kinds of, you name it, they're from, they're from, uh, I don't know, I've gotten them from everything and sometimes I, I use them from, I take old clothes apart. Does anybody else do that? I take old clothes apart. Um, if I'm looking for like, because a lot of times, at least where I live, and I'm not saying this is for, for everyone, but where I live, you know, everything ends up in a landfill. I live on an island, so, you know, and people come here and they bring their stuff and then they don't leave with it or they don't take it with them or whatever, and it just ends up in a landfill. So I try to use all the bits and stuff pieces that I have. Okay, so I went through the center, and then I'm going to go, and then I went through the back, see the back here, and it doesn't matter if it's not straight, and this one's not straight by any means, and that's because of the thickness of the junk mail that I've used. Now I'm going to go all the way down to my end one, and this one's not straight, and I'm sorry, if I'm sewing it for like a specific project, it would be totally straight. I could take it apart and, and as perfectionist as I am, even though it's junk mail, I may do that at some point, but I'm not going to do it today to waste your time. And then I'm going to go back through the center and then I'm going to tie it off. And what I do to tie off, um, as I tie, there's um, thread on both sides and you know, make sure one piece of the thread's on one side, one's on the other, and then I just tie it off. And I'm going to leave it loose because I'm going to go ahead and put some sort of, I'll put some sort of bits and pieces on it. But that is it, you guys. That is all there is to it. It is not that hard. I made it harder than it was with my thick junk mail. But, let me see what you guys have written. You have clothes? Okay, so I take apart clothes. And, and, and that's my other thing, okay? I take apart clothes, which is fun for some and fine for some and not fine for others and so I have uh, today I was looking because I want to make a journal and I'll show it to you guys in a little bit I'm making a journal making a an altered book and in this altered book I thought maybe I would like to sew some fabric tabs like instead of doing junk mail tabs I'd like to do fabric tabs and so I was sitting on the floor earlier. What did I do with bites of bed? I was sitting on the floor earlier and I was going through all these bits and pieces and scraps of, of things. Now, you know, I make my I make tabs out of fabric, like I was gonna sew them on there. I make covered buttons. Does anybody else do covered buttons? Hi Sherry! Welcome. So the covered button thing, I make covered buttons as well. So, you know, it's, so I was sitting on the floor going through all my fabric earlier and my little puppy thought that she was doing it too. And then I think I'm going to be able, I think I may be able to just do this without um, having to take it apart because there's not, first of all, it's not as thick as the first signature, and second of all, it doesn't have all of that really heavy, heavy um, cardstocky junk mail, you know, that really glossy, that, that can be very heavy sometimes, don't so you think? So tell me what you guys are all working on. I want to hear about it. Besides me and my crazy making fabric bits and I've made so if you guys look at my channel, I have made some fabric journals as well. I made I made some cool fabric ones. I actually the silly thing is when I make stuff half a time I give it away and I don't um I don't ever make it again for myself. Isn't that silly? So, Sherry, where do you live? I don't remember, and you may have told me, but you guys, I'm terrible. My memory 
I used to have a great memory. My memory is gone. People tell me things and and I don't remember. Okay, I'm just poking mine. Poked it through the center. I'm gonna flip this over here and then I'm gonna mark the rest of my I have made snippets. I made, okay, let me tell you guys my foray. Oh, you're, and you're in Manitoba. Oh, where it's nice and warm. Do you ever come to Hawaii? A lot of Canadians come to Hawaii. Okay, I'll, next time Ash will show you my covered buttons. If my space is a little bit more organized better, I would show it to you now, but there's like no way I can show you anything. I told you I was trying to do that silly Kanmari method, and I'm having my own me having my own my own organizing my own organizing hell. Um, a snippet from my I'll tell you what I made, and I'll tell you what I know them to be, and then you guys can look them up online and see. So a snippet roll was at one point, at least when I was growing up, my grandmother had one. She used to have them. Her snippet rolls were like bits and pieces of lace and different things that were sentimental to her. And she would sew them all. She would actually tack them. She wouldn't like sew them down forever. And they had buttons and bits and pieces. And she would tack little bits and pieces, or, or like me, with me collecting all the stuff on all the clothing things that I that I mess with, that I want to, that I, you know, salvage and whatever. I'm just poking holes through to the other side and then I'll sew it all the way through. Um, you would tack them into a roll and they're usually about, well, I don't know, two feet long. And they can be bits of fabric and lace and different things that you enjoy. And they're hanging by your, by your, your sewing station or where, you know, like where you sew and And then those are things that you could take off and use in other projects or different things like that. You could also share them with your friends. Well, now, I mean, obviously there's not a lot of home sewers anymore. Let's face it. I mean, if you're a quilter, then yes, you probably do have some snippet rolls. But for the most part, and I mean, maybe it's a coming back trend. It's, it's more of an art form now where you would share, you know, your like cool bits of pieces. So I've made some cool snippet rolls. So the last... I was in a swap, I don't know, uh, maybe six months ago, in a group, and we made snippet rolls. I thought the idea, okay, of making the snippet roll, because of seeing how my grandmother had made her own snippet rolls, or, you know, things that she saved, or whatever, I thought the idea was that everything had to be hand sewn on. So I hand sewed mine. Now the ones I got back, somebody hot glued theirs. So, you know, I don't think there's any hard and fast rule to it. But I like made handmade fabric flowers. I, you know me, I can't do anything like in a, I think I make my life more difficult than it needs to be. Um, I did handmade flowers, I made fabric flowers, I did handmade, um, I don't know, all kinds of bits and pieces. So. There. And so a snippet wool is is that. So if you look online, it's a really fun. I did like a little hand embroidered. I did some primitive embro embroidery on some uh, fabric that I had. I had an old muslin dress, and I did some primitive embroidery on mine. Um, I think you could do anything on it. There's no rules to it. I, if you go on YouTube and you put in fabric roll or snippet roll, you're going to see some crazy stuff. I mean, there is some... I'm going to seriously have to put a, a little cover, a little pocket over that. Um, you'll see some crazy stuff. There's people seriously like take their snippet rolls to the next level. Like I've seen ladies that they're just like off the charts amazing. You know, mine was just super simple and not, I don't think mine was that amazing. But it was, it was still fun and I enjoyed making it. So that is what a snipper roll is. It's just a way for you to share your bits and pieces. You know, I sort of, some people use it as like a storytelling board, but with fabric pieces, and I thought that was kind of a cool idea too. 
I'm going to add a little pocket to this little, I got glue on it. It's a super thin glue was on my, my template. I laid it in glue and I'm going to go ahead and so you have four videos on hold. I'm sorry. I'm missing all this stuff. Three, three in the morning in South Africa. You're from South Africa. Awesome. Well, welcome Marcy. Are you a night owl inside? If it's three in the morning there, you must be a night owl. I'm a night owl, so I can relate. I can completely, completely and absolutely relate to being a night owl because I am. I mean, it's not, it's, it's only three o'clock in the afternoon here. Most of the time when I do my live streams, they're really late. For you guys, it's not late for me, so. I had somebody like email me and say, could you please do it earlier? So that is why I'm doing it earlier. Jerry Bellini. Oh, awesome. Go online and look up snippet rolls. I mean, they're so cool. I mean, you can make them in any way you want to make them. Snippet rolls are like, they're like super cool. There's a beautiful artist that makes her version of snippet rolls. I'm trying to think of her name. If I think of it, Sherry, I'll, I'll email it to you. She's, I think she's English. Um, but she makes hers, she does all of hers are hand embroidered. And they're just gorgeous. Like she has old vintage laces in hers. And you know, I don't think there's any, there's no rules in crafting. You know, you just do your, do it, do it, uh, but you feel best. You know, I think if you if you look at quilting, snippet rolls, I, there's a lot of quilters that do snippet rolls. And I bet you theirs are amazing because of the, the cool fabrics that they have. When I lived on the mainland, I had a huge fabric stash. Living here, I don't, you guys. It's just, it's like one of those things. It's like, and you can't, I don't know. I was in a I was in a swap with some people and they were like sharing laces and I said, "I can't share a lace with you guys because lace isn't something that you get here." So it's kind of fun to see what people get and what they have. So there's a little pocket to cover up my 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 oops. Okay, I'm just going to leave my fabric my tails long until I decide what I'm going to do with them. But what I am going to go ahead and do is I am going to go ahead and um, twine bind this friend together and then we'll see what we, and I'm going to twine bind it I think with this black and white twine someone sent me somebody you know I think somebody sent me this which I was which is awesome I'm always grateful when you never know what you don't have until you don't have it so when you and you can order just about anything online but not every place will ship here so sometimes it's like cost prohibitive to try and even get any, like you just go, wait till you, no, I go back to the mainland enough, at least once a year, sometimes twice a year, and uh, try to take an extra empty suitcase um, and try to take an extra empty suitcase so that I can um, bring back cool stuff. It's 2 a.m. It's 2 a.m. where you are, Brigeline? Oh, wow. Didn't you tell me you were going to visit your sister? Where does your sister live, Brigeline? Okay, so I'm just going to go back to the center of where my, where I've sewn my um, signature in, um, both of them, and I'm just going to I'm just going to go ahead and tie them up at the top. Now, I'm going to keep my tails long because I'm going to hang stuff off of them. I don't know exactly what. Like, I don't I don't know exactly yet. I may make some of my, you know, make some of those soda can charms. Um, I may, I don't know. But I'm going to, I'm going to tie mine up so that I can. So I have the option to hang bits and pieces off. And maybe I'll make tassels. I don't know. 
One of the books I made, I went back and I braided some really cool beads in the back of the, of the junk mail journal. And I'm gonna leave my tails long on the inside until I decide what if I'm gonna if I'm gonna hang charms or what I'm gonna hang off of that. I don't know yet. Shall I buy lace from AliExpress? You know, I haven't even I bought a million years ago a few things from AliExpress and they and it's always good. It just takes a really long time to get where I am. So I haven't bought any lace from there. But I will totally try. It'll last for two years. <laughs> Ash, I agree. You're probably right. Like, I buy it and it last for two years. That's why sometimes I think it's fun to be in swaps with people because you can, you know, say, hey, look, I have a lot of this and you have a lot of that and, you know, let's, I'll trade you this for that. That That's kind of fun, too. So, are you guys going to, did any of you get as far as I am on your junk mail? Did you paint your 10 pages of, your 20 pages of junk mail? And, um, you know, I'm going to use this as a glue book, I think. I don't know. We'll see. I'm kind of into glue books right now. Is anybody else into glue books? I'm kind of into them. And I might go ahead and tie these together. So if the signatures stay closer. I'm sorry, I'm missing all the stuff. You've been bed bound for two years? Oh, I'm sorry, Ash. It was an expensive way for me to start a stash. You know, I think it's really fun. If you if you if you join a couple of Facebook groups, there's a couple um, that I really like and they're always and they're good about sharing their stash stuff with you. There's lots of um, really fun journaling groups on, on Facebook that are fun. Okay, what do you guys think? These are kind of long. I'm, I don't need that much for charms, but I can cut some of it off until I decide what I'm going to do next. Just going to leave a little bit there and then a little bit in here. Glue books. Okay, Michelle, I am very addicted to glue books. Okay. Weren't you ever addicted as a kid, like, to gluing things down? So, I always have been, and I have, like, if you looked at the scrapbooks that I have, like, some people's, or the journals that I have, my, a lot of mine are, um, they're, they're more pictorial journals. Okay, girls, I haven't finished it by any means, but it's all sewn together, and now it will come to adding more pockets and pages, and painting a little bit more and I did add a couple of other um, security envelope pockets and this one I glued down but I also put a little piece of washi tape because I liked that color I I do have some nice washi tape that I like that I got when I was but here we go I mean this is like this is something you don't have to take as long as I took to do it this is something you probably could do if you sat down you could do it in, a, in an afternoon or, or less uh, it's just the paint drying technique is what the paint drying is. What. I agree with you, Brazilian art is healing. Let's see, Michelle, you'll. Okay, I'm sorry, let me read. It says, um, you know what, Ash, I have to agree with you. You know, sometimes you can really, you can art your way through your pain and, uh, you know, I appreciate that. So this is the beginning of my glue book. Now I'm going to show you guys a couple of other books that I'm working on. So we sewed that one in and now we just have to put our, our art in there, get it going. Okay, so I love to jelly print. The rest of you guys like to jelly print too? Who who likes to jelly, jelly print? I love jelly printing. I also paint a lot of, I like stenciling and stuff like that too. I like the color part. Anyway, um, I always have next to my little crafting table some little books that I roll off into. And what I mean by that, I, put this, I lost my needles today. That, that was the other thing. That was my other ridiculous 
I have a ton of them and I managed to lose them and I don't want to lose this one. Anyway, give me a second. I love this size book. Okay, this is a very small book. Most of the time you can find them in the giveaway pile or free pile anywhere. They, these like Who Moved My Cheese, One Minute Money Managers. It is 95 pages, okay? That is what this book is made from. And so, and I use the, the um, dust covers. I put those in my junk journals. You could also make a junk journal from one of these. You know, just if you're going to make them from a dust cover, in fact, we could make one of those if you guys want it. Um, put a piece of Tyvek or Express Mail envelope, FedEx envelope, or if you have Tyvek tape that you can buy. I sometimes just glue the whole inside with a piece of Tyvek or, or used uh, mail packaging that I've already received in the mail, you know, and uh, instead of putting it in a landfill, glue it on the inside, and then you can glue some fabric or something over it if you want it, or paint on the inside after you've put down your Tyvek, just because, so that the spine is uh, more durable, and then you can use this as a junk journal cover. Now, really nice, cool old vintage ones are excellent. I have some, they're usually falling apart. Sometimes I glue those to file folders. Um, older vintagey ones that I'm, you know, from books that are falling apart. But you can then glue, use the front like a collage. Like you could, you could go ahead and collage over all of it, and then you already have your base for your cover. And I, so I save these. And I, the funkier the better. But so this is what. I'm sorry, guys. I'm gonna move my book. So this is what this book looked like. Okay, I painted it with chalkboard paint. You can paint it with anything. Oh no. I'm missing everything. I am no, I am by no means a master of anything, you guys. Okay, so I am I'm just a my kids tell me I'm the I'm a trash I'm a trash picker. That's what they call me, the trash picker. So I use chalkboard paint. Now I bought a big bottle of chalkboard paint and I don't have it in front of me. You can buy any kind you want. I bought one at a big box store because that's what we have. It's lasted me literally like three or four years and I still haven't gotten down to the end of it. So I painted this with chalkboard paint and you can see it on the inside. Now I haven't made any pockets yet and I will. But then what I did was I kept it next to my painting station. Like so I keep, I have a stack of books on the floor next to where I jelly print and or where I'm painting and so if I have extra paint or if I have a cool stencil out I just go through and I paint and I stencil and I roll off so they're all not going to be the same the colors may not match um, this one I had this really cool green paint that I loved it was that green paint that's part of the, the cover of this book right and I had a whole bunch of it left over I had a stencil so rather than me wasting my paint I just went through and I rubbed all of it in here. Now, sometimes I take the pages out of this and I make those fun library pockets that I make all the time. I make that. Sometimes, this one I didn't, okay? So this one I've just painted all the pages and I think I'm gonna use it as one of my collage journals or glue books. Okay, and in the back I made my little, two little accordion pockets in the back so that I could add some stuff to it have an extra piece if I'm going to decide, I haven't decided whether I'm going to make a, uh, you know, an envelope over it or what I'm going to do. So, you know, this, this is the next book. I'm, this is my book in process right here. So if you guys wanted to join in, you just need a small book. I mean, you could do it on a big book too, but this was just, uh, You're super thrifty. I'm super thrifty too. That's why I told you my kids come as a trash picker. So I don't know if you guys want to make along with me and make and make this book as well. I mean, that's this is this is what I'm I'm working on. But what I can show you guys um, really quickly while I have you here, I just need to get a glue stick and I can show you how to make the pockets in the back. Because Ellen, you asked for the pockets. Are you still here, Ellen? If you're still here, I'll show you how to make this and then you don't have to watch another video. It's like so easy. So I don't know if anybody else wants to make along. Just You can do it with them. I've made them with magazines. You can make it with anything. Um, 
you know and I think this one so what I'm going to do from now on is I'm going to cut up bits and pieces that I want to put in my blue book in my collage journal and I'm going to put them keep them in here and then I am going to then maybe the next time we get together I will sit down and start gluing, we can start gluing in but this is a super fun easy way to like use up the rest of your paint or sprays or whatever you have out like if you spray what I find when I'm spraying like this sort of stuff like what I'm spraying in the in my junk mail the stencil keeps that alcohol spray on it so if you just turn it over and put it between two pages and then just press it down it comes off on the page so that is what that's what a lot of this is I'm actually really liking this now see how it's separated here I may go back and just glue some fabric in or I, I don't know you know it doesn't matter let's see you have issues oh no oh no Brigeline Art has been your savior. Yeah. You know what? I have to tell you it's mine too. I have to tell you it is mine too. I make art every day. I can't imagine living a, a day without making any art. So if you guys want to get a couple of, get a magazine or a book, I'll show you how to make the back pockets really quick. I just need to get a glue stick. And I'll be right back. Just give me two seconds and I'll get a glue stick. Oh, mom, mom, I'm up. I'm going to get that book I want to show you guys. Just give me one second. Everybody take a coffee break for two seconds. Okay, hey ladies, sorry. I had a, told you I have my stuff everywhere, so I had my glue sticks, the ones I'm using, in, in my other art space, which is in my room. So, you guys tell me what glue sticks you love. I love Uhu glue sticks, but you really can't get them here. You guys tell me what you guys like. I order them. I haven't ordered any in a while. But I right now I'm using any sort of permanent glue. This is like a Avery permanent glue stick and Elmer Extreme I like. I also like just plain school glue too. So, so I'm going to show you guys how to make these pockets and it's so easy. <coughs> tea time. Where's the biscuits? You take sugar. Okay, Virgiline, I drink English tea every day. Okay? I drink English tea every day. You, what do you want? Please make a junk journal with a jacket. Oh, well, I'll make a junk journal with a jacket, Jennifer. Save your jackets. Maybe I'll, and I'll, so I have my English tea going on in here. It's like, and I drink it cold. I <laughs> made myself a huge thing of it. Um, I drink some English tea and I have it with milk and sugar. I mean, I like it hot, but I don't often sit down and drink it when it's hot. Okay. So, you need to decide if you're going to do this. Decide if you're going to put it in the back or the front. You could also put it in the middle of your pages, too. Um, only reason why is because you want to count, you want to leave. Okay, so leave the back. I'm going to put it in the back of this book since I put it in the back of that one. And I got these books for free, so I didn't, I have friends that collect books for me, and this is a brand, this book is in brand new condition. I mean, I don't even know if it was ever read. Now, I'm not so crazy about this particular book's pages, the paper quality of it isn't so great, but it's fine for a glue book. You know, I wouldn't say you would want to spend a lot of time painting 
check your paper out. You know, you can get really thin books that have excellent, excellent paper. Those Funk and Wagnall, um, the green books I showed you earlier, the Funk and Wagnall uh, encyclopedias, those little small ones, the paper is excellent. I've made a million library pockets with it. Okay, so you want to leave the last, leave three pages, leave the bookend page which, what's the name of this paper? What is the name of the bookend page? You guys, I can't think of it. Okay. So leave, leave that. Okay. And then leave at least two more pages. All right. So don't mess with that. Leave those two. Then you're going to glue, depending upon the thickness of your paper. You want to, and you want to use glue stick for this just because it will wrinkle your pages and glue stick is just best. I've you've done it with wet glue and it works better because you're going to glue the whole piece of paper. So you want to leave three pages, the end paper, and then two more pages. And I'll show you why when we finish. And then you want to glue, with the, then you want to glue the, the fourth page to, to the, going this direction to the fifth page. Okay? And make sure you get your glue into the spine because this piece of paper is going to be, this paper sort of acts like your divider. Okay, so you want to make sure, and usually I have, which I don't have right here, but let me see. Usually I have like some wax paper because I, I was not as prepared as I, as I usually am. Not that I'm prepared at all because I'm not really, but I don't know where I did it. Let me see, where's my... All right, it doesn't matter. Let me just find something to glue it. You just want to be able to get to the end of your page. So that's why I usually have a piece of wax paper so that I can make sure that I, or you could put a magazine page, whatever you have. You just want to make sure you get your ends, the ends of your paper, you know, because that, you want it to stick, okay? So, now you could do this freestanding too. It just works better in a book, but, you know, you can do the same thing with you can do it with junk mail. I mean, you don't have to do it with anything. Okay, so here's that page, and you want to take the next page over where the glue sticky, and you're going to burnish it down. Now, I don't, I don't have a burnisher, so I'm just using the top of my glue, but you want to burnish it down. Go to the spine first and work your way out to the edges. It doesn't have to be perfect. I realize this is just an altered book, it's not perfection, you know. All right, so you want to feel the thickness of your paper. And this, I, I think I did three pages. So we're going to do three pages for this one too. So you're going to go ahead and put glue on this page there. You want this, because it's the part of your book, you want it to be sturdy, okay? Don't be skimpy. It's, a, it's an altered book. You're not, um, okay, so... Go back, make sure the edges are done too. You know, be generous with your glue because it's, you know, this is your divider. Your This is what's going to hold all your stuff in. Okay, make sure you get your edges. All right, now take the page before it and push it down one more time on that glued page. So technically you've glued two pages together. Okay, so this is what we have in our book. We have our end page, and then two pages, and then we have three pages glued together. Okay, what am I missing? Oh, there's a chrome pages. Oh, let me see these. Okay, fly leaf. The fly leaf. Okay, the fly leaf. Okay, that's what it's called. The fly leaf. Awesome. Thanks, Michelle. All right, so you have that. Now, it's probably good if you do have a magazine page or some. If I can find a magazine page. If you do have a magazine page or you do have some something because it does stay a little sticky toward the end and you just don't want your book to stick together, especially with this particular one. Now, what you want to do is you're going to have to rip out some pages. Now, there's some, there's a couple of cool things that you can think about or do. If you're not like super, um, where's the book that I did? 
What I did after I ripped up these pages, I didn't do it in every one I've done, but because these pages are so fragile, can you guys see inside? I put, because the book binding itself is fragile, I put washi tape in between it. But you don't have to do that, okay? So you want to rip your pages out. So you want to decide. When you're doing like that big funk and wagnall, let me find this one. Okay, so like when I did these, like this one, I ripped out um, this funk and wagnall, I ripped out 10 pages between each one. You don't need that in a small accordion file. But do you see how many books there are? There's like 400 pages in this book. So, and I'm going to use it as an altered book, so I'm going to tear out more pages. So I did. On a smaller book, you don't need to do that. And this one that's just an accordion file that has a scrap paper in the back, I don't know how many I did. I think I sectioned it off, and I don't know. I can't remember, you guys. So I'm just letting you know. So you want to rip out at least, let's just say, let's say in this particular book, let's rip out five pages. Now just be gentle and careful when you're ripping them out. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect, and you can leave a piece inside. Because you don't want the accordion to separate from your book. Okay? Four, let's see, maybe I've done over three, four. Now, let me just show you what we can do instead of ripping out all. If you don't like the way this, I put washi tape inside of mine, you don't have to do anything. But if you don't like, say you ripped it out jaggedly, or you see that it's coming undone here, this is a little trick. On the fifth page, cut it down to like maybe leave an inch, a half an inch, okay? And then take that half an inch or inch that you've left, instead of doing your washi tape, take that half inch or inch that you've left, and glue it to the other side of the pages. Do you see? It doesn't have to be perfect, but that's just so that your seam or whatever you're using, it'll also help it stay apart a little bit. You could just put washi tape. Okay, so now you're, what you're going to do is you're going to glue these three pages together. Okay, do you see how our, how our accordion is going to be? So move your your um, glue protector or whatever you want to call it over. Count three pages. Start on the farthest page away and do your glue. Now you want to save the pages that you've torn out because you're going to use those for your accordion bit. Okay. This makes sense if anybody doesn't. Mom is a writer, and anyway, I'm missing all the I'm missing all the chat. I can't figure out how to chat, and I probably need somebody to read me the chat because I can't. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Reuse music. Everything. Alter. Okay. Reuse music. Says, um, hi Renee. She said. Uh, hi Wendy. Okay. My favorite thing to do lately when I'm preparing books for altering is to leave about one inch of the pages I remove and then attach new papers. Yes, I've done that. I've done that. I made a, one of my favorite altered books of all times I've made that way. And I made a s altered sketchbook that way for my daughter. If you guys go back and look at my, um, my videos, I made, um, an altered sketchbook like that. I left a bunch of the paper. I painted some of them out. I left some of them and then I cut it and, uh, the cheese, there's cheese in the whole book, and I've got a stack of these. Okay, let me see. Sure, I've never heard of that term before. Okay, yep, I've been doing that. Cheese, you gotta say that one? Okay. Your mom's a writer, and she's embedding in my head. I would do you a great, I would do great on Jeopardy. Laugh out loud. <laughs> oh my gosh. You guys are so funny. You are so, so funny. Okay, so now you've glued those two pages, and now you have this one. And you're going to make, just make sure you get it to the ends, the, the ends of the paper, okay? And use a permanent glue stick. You can use other glue, but, um, I've used school glue in my other ones too. It works, but a 
permanent I think is better, especially if you, um, and glue stick is better than wet glue. Okay, so I'm using my very fancy burnishing tool, my empty glue stick. Okay, so you have these two. So now you have the back three that you've glued together, and then you have five pages taken out. The fifth page you've cut off about, you've left about an inch, and then you've folded it over, and then you have this. Okay? Now, let's go ahead and do the next set of pages as well. Now, this is the little bit of a tricky part, okay? And you can't get stuck on making this. You can't get caught up in thinking that it has to be perfect because it's not going to be perfect, okay? I mean, you might get one perfect, but then you're not going to get the next one, and it's just not worth the stress over it. But the middle uh, page is going to be both the end page and then the beginning page of this one. You want to leave one page with nothing in between. You want to leave one page in between, just like this, okay? Fold it over to that side, and then you're going to start, you're going to tear out four more pages. So, do you see what I've done? Okay, so you've left your fly, was it the fly page? Is that what it's called? Fly page? No, what was it called? I can't go back and see in the chat. What did you, what is it called, Michelle? Okay, so you want to leave that, you want to leave two pages, glue three pages together, tear out four on the fifth page, cut it for an inch, fold it over to the three you've glued, then glue three more pages, leave one page, okay, leave one page not glued, it's just free, and then you're going to go back and you're going to tear out four pages or five pages again be, be very gentle with your with your paper with your paper pulling and you can leave bits in it if you want I mean it's just going to be inside of a folder so it doesn't matter three four now you can you want to cut your fifth page like three four Cut your fifth page. All right. Now don't glue anything. Don't glue that to anything yet. And you're gonna go and you're gonna glue these three pages together. So you're gonna go back to this side. Okay. And you're gonna glue three pages together. Does this make sense? The fly. The fly leaf. Today's new word. The fly leaf. Okay. The fly leaf. I'm gonna remember that. The fly leaf. You know, a million five thousand years ago, when I was in my twenties, I was really into bookbinding and made homemade paper and made paste paper and did all that sort of stuff. And I used to know. Can you tell them? I used to know what um, all these names were, and we can remember it now. Three children later, two stepchildren. I don't remember anything. Plus two stepchildren. My family is all coming home, so if you hear like loud barks and stuff, it's because they're home and the dog is going to be all happy. And I do have a ten-year-old at home. She was my surprise. She was my in my forties. Have a baby. And the best surprise, I'm not, it's, it is the most amazing surprise. So I get to do that whole thing again, which is really fun. Okay. So let's look at what we have so far. Now we've glued those pages together, and then we're going to get ready to do our accordion bits. Okay, so here we go. The fly leaf. <laughs> and two pages with nothing. Glued three pages together. Tore out four on the fifth. Cut it an inch and glued it two the previous three, you've glued three pages together, a page that's vacant, torn out four, have your half of an inch, I mean your one inch paper, okay? Now, you can go ahead and glue your one inch strip to your 
paper right here, your single sheet. And I'm going to show you what that single sheet is going to do. Now, you don't have to do it that way. It's just my little perfectionist nature, okay? Not everybody has to have the crazy perfectionist nature that I do, but that is just what it is. Okay. So let's, now we're going to make our accordion page bits, okay? Now we're going to make our, we're going to take the pages that you've torn out. Now you want to take the pages you've torn out and you want to fold them in half and you are going to need four of them. Okay, maybe you're going to need more. Hang on, let's see. My head can't think right now. Let's see. One, two. No, you're only going to need four. So you want to take your pages. They don't have to be perfect. You're going to fold them in half, and you're going to glue them together. All right? So do that really quick. Now, this is something you can do when you're watching TV. This is sort of a mindless. You can get all your books all prepped for your altered books. Okay, so you're going to go ahead and glue four pages together, just like that. What time is it where I am? It is 3.30 in the afternoon. I usually stream much later. I usually do it like, I don't know, 6 o'clock my time, 5 or 6 my time. But I got, or maybe even later than that, but I got a message from one of my, from one of you that said, would I please consider streaming earlier? And so I just tried this time. So I don't know if that works. This is, I know it's not good for you, Bridgeline, because it's like three in the morning you said there or whatever. But post-it note, laugh out loud. I definitely need a post-it note, okay? You guys, I'm not, I am forgetful sometimes, okay. So have you guys had a crazy day today? I had a totally, absolutely crazy day. Okay, so we got this puppy. And we've been on her. She, she's a rescue. She's about a year old, we're guessing. Um, and she was clearly, she's a really tiny dog. She's a, I don't know what kind of breed. I want to say she's a, we think she's like a half chihuahua, half um, greyhound. Her body's like a greyhound, but her face is like a chihuahua. And she's just so sweet. We named her Charlie. And so, you know, we get up at all varying stages in the day and time. And I'm a night person, so I stay up late. And then one of us gets up and takes my daughter or myself, get up and take my youngest daughter to school. And we leave our house at 6 a.m. So generally the dog... But the dog loves to ride in the car, but we're all trying to, like, potty train her, and anyway, all these house, and she's fairly good. If you stay on top of it, she's fairly good, but, you know, the moment we get up, we take her out, and anyway, to make a very long story short, my da my oldest daughter, who I told you is visiting me right now before she moves to the Far East. She got up and took my daughter to school today, so I didn't, and the dog didn't get up, which is normally the dog gets up. So, we, I got up and I walked the dog, it was like 5.30 this morning, and then I laid back down, and then like at 8.30 I got up to get up, and I immediately took the dog out, and all, in our house, all of the bedrooms have sliding glass doors, like um, patio doors. And a screen, and we don't have any air conditioning. I mean, we live in the tropics, so we leave all the, we leave everything open with just a screen, obviously, so that we don't have any mosquitoes. Well, there's a, like a cord that runs to our, our internet or whatever right across the door. So I open the screen door, and my toe catches on the cord. I fall out the door, <laughs> the screen door falls out the door, and I scare the hell out of the dog. Okay, so that's how I started my day. And then I told you guys I dropped things and I couldn't find my sewing needle. That's how my day's been. Okay, so now you want to take those pages that you've got, those four pages that you've glued together, so you guys heard my ridiculousness. You woke up, wait, wait, still awake, Shell. You're still, you're still awake, Rose. Woohoo! Rose, Rose says I put her to sleep. Hi, D. Rose says my voice puts her to sleep. So if you guys want to, please feel free to use me as a, if, if I'm a good sleeping pill for you, I'm awesome, you know, awesome. 
We are making, we finished our junk mail book and I'll, I'll go over it. And right now we're just making an accordion files D to go in the back of our, go in the back of, of an altered book. Okay, so now you've, you've glued your four pages together. Now you want to take those pages and you want to fold them in half. This is the big mystery. Okay, ready? You want to fold those four pages in half. And you want to glue, you want to fold one back on itself that direction and turn it and fold it the other direction the same way. So I'll show you what it looks like. So it looks like a W or an M, okay? These are the glue pa glued pages. So you want to fold them together. This is the part that's going to make your accordion bit. Now you could, if you wanted to make them like a whole bunch of little tiny accordions, have at it. I'm not that invested. Okay. If you wanted to sew them together, do it. I think it would look cool with a bunch of strings hanging out. So you want to make these M's or these W's. They do not have to be perfect. Repeat after me. They do not have to be perfect. So let go of your perfectionist. I have a very relaxing voice. I think if you talk to my kids, I have, I have, they would not say that. They would say that I have an annoying voice. I appreciate you guys thinking that. Okay, so now we have our four M's and W's. Look, I have issues sleeping, so anything that can put me to sleep, I welcome it. <laughs> Are you kidding? So you have your four bits. Okay. And you are folding them back. And you are folding them back. Okay, we've got our four bits, just like this. Okay, this is the part that you can mess up super easy if you're me and, or I love Lucy, okay? You wanna start with your back bit, okay? You wanna decide which direction do you want your folds. Do you want them to fold in or do you want them to fold out? It doesn't matter, but I like mine to fold in, okay? So, take your glue stick and put it on if you put it on the inside of one end of your fold okay and you are going to and you are going to glue it to the outside of your page now of your first three section of your first section of pages where there's three glued together. Okay? Does that make sense? So, it will look like this. Okay? Now, turn your book and do the other side the same way. Make sure your, your things are folded. I have glued them all together before and realized I've glued one side in one way and one side in another way. So, to avoid your I Love Lucy, to avoid the I Love Lucy that I bring to the table. Now I also, um, also it doesn't matter which side you glue in, and of course I did it wrong on this one, but it's better, I think it works better if you glue, uh, if you glue the non-torn side to the top. Okay, so I'm just reversing it because I had glued the torn side. Not that it matters, I mean it's just an altered book, it doesn't really matter, but it kind of does to me. The other thing is, is that you don't have to have it match, at the, but if you're going to have it match anywhere, match it at the top. Like how, if you want it to, if you're going to have it match any direction, match it at the top. So see, I already did my I Love Lucy for you guys because I, I did it. I did it the wrong, I did it, ugh, seriously. Guys, I'm telling you. I've made these things so many times you think I'd get it right, but I don't. So, okay, now here, this is what we have. We have these three pages and these three pages, do you see? So we have it like this, can you see? And we have the processed pages into the top and then the torn ones at the bottom. Now you're going to take your next page and you're going to do the same thing. You're going to put the fold part on the inside, just the fold part, 
and you're going to let that piece of paper wrap around to the back. Okay? Now you may have to finagle it so that your pages, so that your page tops match. And, you know, it's not totally necessary. It's just my ridiculousness. And they're not going to be perfect. Okay? It's not going to be perfect. Now that one stuck automatically because I'd already glued it down. I mean, I'd already put glue on it because I was putting it in the book the wrong way. This side, just glue, put, put the glue on the paper itself because I have so many empty glue sticks. I keep saving them because I don't know. I don't want to end up in a landfill and I use the top sometimes for circle templates. But if you guys have any, does anybody else have any great ideas for used glue sticks? I'm not sure of what, how much paper you can, I mean, how much glue you can, how much plastic you can recycle. And what you want to do is you want to try to edge it down. You want to work with it a little bit so that you can get it even down. But you're going to have to pull it, you, because it's going to be an opening, you're going to have to pull it down a little bit. They do not have to be perfect. <laughs> no, they don't have to be perfect. Okay, so there you have, that's one pocket. Now, the reason you saved this page is so that you can glue it to give it some more stability. You don't have to, but you don't want to glue it yet, okay? You're not gluing anything yet. Okay? But what I find is that this, this center section, and then you can also hide your, your bits on the inside, okay? So what you're going to do is, on this next one, you're going to glue it. So you have your singular page here. You have your three pages glued. Your three pages glued. You've got your outside. It's glued to the outside here, glued to the outside here, glued to the outside. So on this one, you're going to glue it to the standalone page. And you're going to glue that standalone page to that page. Right? Or you can glue and the same here. Do you understand? Okay. So that's what we're going to do right now. I'm going to put glue on the inside. We're going to glue it to the standalone page. It will all be glued together eventually, but I just found for myself this is the way that worked best for me so that I didn't have a lot of edges open. But if you're not as anal as I am, it doesn't really matter. If you're not as, like, I have issues, okay? I admit, I totally have issues. Okay, so then you're going to glue it to your standalone page. You want to push it down as far as it goes. No, it does not have to be perfect. Okay. I mean, I don't think you're going to be sticking, like, sequins in here, but maybe you will be. This is kind of a fun way, I mean, if you wanted to make some of these little books with your kids or with, with children, it's really a fun thing because a kid, I mean, they're as in love with pockets and tags and tabs as we are, and I've made these with my daughter and she loves it. Okay, so your standalone page has that on it, okay? You're going to go ahead and glue it to this page. Now, this is something you can think about. I've done this in a couple of my books. You don't have to. You can glue the whole thing down, you can glue this whole page down, or you can just glue the ends down and leave like a place for tags. That is totally, completely up to you. Okay? Hang on one second, I, I, got, my, I got my thing hanging out over here too much. See my, my obsessive compulsive OCD get it right thing? comes into play. As hard as I try for it not to, it still does. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to glue mine all the way down, but you don't have to. You could just glue the sides down and you could leave it for some tags if you wanted to. Now you definitely want to make sure because the thickness of your papers are here are a little thicker than the other ones, you want to take the time to, to, to do a good gluing job with your glue stick. You know, this is your little creation, your little book. 
Now you could use less pages, you know, as far as like cutting pages apart or less pages, like you could glue just two together. Um, you just want it to be strong enough so that it, um, so that it holds together. You know, it holds rather better than a regular, um, use my burnisher, my, my glue, my empty glue stick burnisher. My empty glue stick burnisher is working. I like my empty. Now you guys are probably mathematically more inclined than I am and could figure out how to do this easier, but this was my way. Okay, so here's your last one. You're gonna put your glue on the outside of the of your last end bit. And your last end bit on this side. These are the three pages that you have that you've glued together. You're gonna pull it up. Sit it straight up when you do it because it will make a difference when you uh, when you glue it down. Now, it's not going to be perfect. You can always go back and cut your tops if you want them to line up perfectly. I'm not that married to it because I know that I'm going to use it functionally as a as an art journal or I'm going to stick bits in it and you know, I'm not that married to the fact that it's not completely perfect, but if you wanted it to be more perfect, you could measure and cut and make your little accordion bits just perfect, perfect, perfect. It just isn't going to happen for me because that's just not where I am. So you guys, you know, have at it. Do with it as you will. I'm just using my burnisher, burnishing my, my glue bits down. Okay, there you have it. Now, you can, at this point, you can decide if you want to, um, I didn't glue this one down enough. If you want to glue, if you want to add some more, uh, if you want to cover up the end page right here, see where you see these bits, then just glue the previous page to it. You know, do you understand what I mean? Like, so that it covers it up. Like, you could take this page now and glue it to here, and it would cover up those end bits. But that's up to you. You don't have to. Now, and that's also why I left this bit. So, let's go ahead and glue those down, and you can see. Now, you may have to go back and trim. You might also want to just allow it to have its own moment to rest or do whatever and see how it sets up for you. Um, no rules. It's an altered book. You know, it's your fun creation, so it's not about perfection or... And you can always go back and trim things if you don't like the way it is. You know, I usually am going to add tags and tabs and, and whatever to it, so for me, it's never going to be... You know, it's not going to look like a manufactured anything. You've taken something that would have been in a landfill and you've made it something useful. So that's that side, and then you can do the same with the other side. The same with the other. With the other. Mine's a little stiff today. I don't know why. It's the same one I used. Maybe it's because this is a newer one, and the one I used originally, I had painted all the papers, and you know, had already been messing with it for a long time. As, a, as an altered book thing. Okay, so here is your one, your last page of your book, and you're going to fold it over, and it covers up all your end bits. And there you go. There's your accordion. That's it. You know, what's kind of fun is I think on the one that I did right here, I had painted the pages, so you can see the accordions, are, the accordion pages are painted, right? Because they were just, the book was, my roll-off book was my, was my book of, so now this book is like ready to go to the next level of whatever sort of altering you want to do to it. The kind of also cool thing about this little tiny, these little small books, is you could make yourself a monthly glue book out of them, you know, that was sort of like my thought process when I started making them. I'm sorry, I'm just burnishing down my pages. Um, 
my thought pro process was, you know, I have, the book itself was only, what was, what did I tell you guys, it was 90 pages, so now I have um, 50 pages that I could art journal in and put my bits and pictures or ephemera or whatever for the month in it, and um, then, you know, now you can do the same process with magazines. I mean, I've made myself some magazine accordion files that I have a couple of my that I keep in my car that have like stuff to go to the post office and stuff like that when I'm mailing it out. It was okay. Let me see. It was part one of this where you were gathering your junk mail? Yes. Part one, Jennifer, was where we painted our junk mail. Uh, we came to the we came to. It's clear as mud. <laughs> I'm sorry, Sherry. Uh, um, part one was where we painted our junk mail. We, you know, I save my junk mail all the time. And part one was where we just painted it. We jelly printed some. We, you can paint it any way you want. Part one was where we painted the junk mail. Part two was where we put together the signatures of the book. And part three, uh, and we added pockets and tuck spots, right? That was for the junk mail part. And then today was just where we sewed them all in. Now, I haven't even begun to work in it, so maybe the next um, live stream we do, I will, you know, we'll do some, I'll do some glue booking. You know, we'll do some glue booking in this one, and maybe if you guys want to make your own one of these, maybe we can also do, you know, some glue booking in, in that as well. Um, we can do some glue booking in these too as well. And then, you know, the difference between these two is that this one I painted, so you can see it's puffy because I've painted all the pages and it was used as a roll-off. And this one, now, the next step for this book would be to poke a hole. First of all, decide what kind of closure you want. Do you want the kind of closure that comes around this way? Or do you want this elastic, do you want this type of closure? And then you want to go ahead and poke your hole and either sew your button if you're going to do the elastic, then go ahead and sew your elastic in the button. And then the inside would be, after that would be to decide on your pockets. If you want pockets. I mean, you don't have to. You could just, uh, you know, you could just put paper in it. You could use your colored paper or whatever, or whatever. anything that you wanted to put in it. You don't have to, uh, you don't have to necessarily use fabric. It's just I got all these fabric books, these fabric upholstery samples. So that's the thing is if you guys are, if you are a scavenger, as I am, <laughs> or whatever, I don't know what you want to call it. My kids call it trash picking. So if you're a trash picker like me, you, you know, look around and see what you can get. You know, upholstery books are great. Wallpaper books are great. Um, you know, this one, this one I may um, I may come back in our next live stream and, and paint it as well. And maybe in our next live stream I'll do some glue booking if you guys want to gather some bits and pieces for your glue book. Um, gather, you know, gather the pieces for your, for, that you want to glue in. And there's no rhyme or reason. You know, you can do whatever you, I mean, sometimes I collect, all, I collect all kinds of different stuff for no reason at all. There's no rhyme or reason to my collecting and hoarding trend. So I'm going to show you guys one more thing before I let you go. And that, um, So I may like faux paint this one. I don't know. I have to fix one of the pages and it's driving me crazy. Maybe I don't have to fix it. Maybe I'll just let it be. Let it drive me crazy. Um, do you guys find that the more you work on something, the more you love it? Recycling collector. I'm a recycling collector. Not a scavenger. Can't give give it a proper title. Okay, Bridgely. I'm a, I am a recycling collector. I'm a collector of recycling. I'm a reused. Per, I'm a person that's obsessed with reusing and repurposing things. Um. Yeah, I can show you. I, I mean, I did faux paint one of these before, but you know, go and get yourself one. Go get yourself now. Now you're going to be on the lookout for these. Who moved my cheese books and. One Minute Money Managers, or any little book that is, I mean, and you can do this with a big book too. You know, you don't have to, okay, this is going to drive me crazy. I don't know why it didn't lay down, but it didn't. It's driving me crazy. Um, you will start using these little, 
I just thought it might be fun to have like a 30, not that I need to do a monthly collage book, but it might be fun if I, if I had just one that I was focusing on and then whatever I was doing in that month is what I focused on it in. You know, like, I'm hopefully going to be traveling soon, so, you know, I could just take it with me and glue in bits and pieces from wherever I am. And so... Oh, thank you, Sherry. You're so sweet. I don't know when my next live one will be. Maybe in a couple of days. I don't know. You guys tell me when you want to get back together. I um, I am always working on projects. I just do it by myself, so I'm sort of solitary in the middle of the ocean doing it on my own. And I told you that I got myself completely overwhelmed with my KonMari... <laughs> my, my KonMari... I don't know, you guys. I, oh, that's what I was going to tell you. So I'm going to open my Etsy shop and it, I used to have one and I used to sell my recycled glass stuff and my jewelry and I may put a few pieces of that in there. But what I am going to do is I'm going to put my grab bags in there. So a grab bag, it, there, it's just going to be a bunch of supplies because I have so many so my daughter was like being very my oldest daughter the one that i told you was moving to japan soon was being very proactive with me and she said you know you love your supplies mom so much you know why don't you share them and i said well that's a great idea so what i'm going to put in there is there's going to be a grab bag and in the grab bag you'll get a gutted book like and hopefully it'll be an old one i don't know if as many of those Reader's Digest ones I have, I'll gut and stick in there. If not, it'll be a really cool cover for a, a really cool book. And then enough, all kinds of cool uh, vintage ephemera and cool bits and pieces. Uh, maybe some painted papers and some handmade bits and pieces for me. It'll be inside that grab bag so you could take it and make yourself probably multiple journals with what you'll get in there. So I will, um, so I will, I'm going to link my Etsy shop as soon as I get it up, I'll go back and link it into there. So be on the lookout if any of you would like one. Um, they're going to be super inexpensive. Not, not expensive. Uh, I, I, at this point I'm only, I haven't, I didn't see what it would cost to ship them to the UK, but I can. Um, I've just have thought about putting them in a priority mail envelope, you know, one of those six, nine by 12 priority mail envelopes and fill it with all kinds of stuff. Uh, what, what is my attention? Okay, let's see. Sounds amazing. Okay, let me see. Whose attention? It's fun. First live chat. Okay. Okay, the glue stick challenge. I'm all for a glue stick challenge. What are we doing for a glue stick challenge? Oh, how to, what to do with your glue stick? I'm game for that. I am so game for that. Well, you know what, Ash, I have, like, you should, if you saw the vintage books and stuff that I have, and maps, and so I think, you know, each one's going to have some map pages, it'll have some, well, I, I don't know, I'll try to do, I'll try to do a, a show of one, um, but each one is going to be different. You really like this time slot if you're still awake? You tried the Komari method and you got to the books and you stopped? Oh no! I know! Right? Okay. Yay, Lynn. And I'm not the only one. Yes, I would totally do a... I'll do a glue stick challenge. I'll have to think about it. I, I, I'm telling you, I have a bag of these plus... I have a bag of glue sticks right here and they're empty. And I don't... Or actually a box of them. And I just... I don't know. I'm having landfill issues. Like, I don't, I don't want to send it. I don't think they recycle them. I mean, do they recycle? Can, do, can anyone else tell me? Do they recycle these empty glue sticks? I mean, I, you know, I don't know, but it'd be good to think about it. My daughter said I needed to figure out how to make, uh, I would love to ship to South Africa. I will have to see what it would cost to be. There must be some way of, well, what I have done is I've taken the lids of these glue sticks and I've used them for stamps and stenciling and things like that. Inside components, I bet you you can make homemade crayons and put them in there. Plastic never deteriorates. I know. 
I totally, you have no idea how it weighs on me and how I think about it. And I live in a place where everything ends up in the ocean, you know? So I don't, if I don't, I think that's why I have so many books and so many things like that. So I think it's, let's just, let's put some thought to it. I might be able to make some homemade crayons or some sort of glitter glue or something like that. Pull up art pages, yeah. The skinny ones in a row, long ways to make a book. Oh, that one might be a really cool, that's a really good idea, Michelle. Yep, I'm, I'm there with you, Rose. I have, I have my own recycling issues and it is, con it constantly weighs on me. Hot glue them. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Totally, totally. Well, you ladies tell me a few other things that you might like to work on, and, and, and we can totally work on those things. I mean, I, I, I love having you as my company and as my friend. I wanted to show you guys the really cool book that my partner brought me home. Now, he did not pay $6.75 for it, but um, this was the, the books I told, just like a photography book. He brought me a couple of them home. Um, and they say they're made in New York. They say they are in New York and in Japan. And it's called Photo Nika. And wait till you see the inside of it. It is like a glue book all on its own. I am like so in love with this. I think I'm going to do some sort of... I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet. But the pages are really a wonderful thickness and a qual an amazing quality. I don't know if I'm going to paint on them or if I'm going to... I don't know. I he just brought them home to me, and so I'm like kind of really in love with them, and it's super. Oh, Michelle, I'm glad you were here. What's a diet? Oh wait, hang on, I'm missing it. I just found out there's a moth in, that eats plastic. Yes, I read that in the news too. Ash, I saw that a moth that eats plastic. Yeah, I saw that. I'm always, I did too. This is the one I want to see across this video on. Wow. Um, this is this is um, a book that I um, that he just gave me. I mean, it's amazing. It was. I think it's it's a it's a catalog, and I don't know. If, oh, these must be stock photos that they offer for you, and so it is amazing. So somebody was throwing it away. So I am going to, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Oh, Bridgeline, I want to see your, can't wait to see your glue sticks too. What do you want to see a process video on? Oh, on me making glue working in this book? Ephemera Heaven. Oh, yes, it's, it is totally Ephemera Heaven. I, yes, I could cut out pictures for ATCs. And ATC is an artist trading card. They're like small, like two by three, two inches by three inches. Get going on my glue book. I'm totally. I have a couple of them going. Wait till you see them. I made one of a magazine too. That one's kind of a crazy one. So this is what he brought me home, and I'm like totally in love with it. And I love the cover, and I love the fact that this person has her mouth open, and I like the the fact that it has like some sort of grease pen that says six dollars and seventy five cents on it. I like it. I kind of like it the way it is. So I'm like, I don't know. You know, for me, I gotta live with stuff that I love, and but I do. It's got some super cool pages in it. So that is the way he brought me home. So anyway. So my lovelies. I have made some artist trading cards. Many of them. And they are quite fun and very addictive. I've also done some. Has anybody else done index card a day? An index card a day is like sort of addictive too. That is like so addictive. It is really, really, really addictive. The index card a day. You guys, make sure you tag me on Twitter, like a business card or a store discount store. Okay, what if I'm... No, it's not like a business card. It is... Let me see if I... I don't have any in front of me. I had a whole bunch of them here last week when I was sitting here. Let me see if I have one here in my my magazine accordion file. Um, it's it, it came about for artists to trade their, their own work. And they're like two and a half by three inches. Is that what it is? Or are they four by six? I can't, you can probably make them any size you want, but there is a standard artist trading card size, and 
you know, it's how artists would share their original artwork, and they would trade them. They would never be for sale. Now, there are artists that do sell their artist trading cards, and, you know, sometimes just getting a small ATC size original artwork from somebody that you really admire is awesome. I don't have any here in front of me. You could use playing cards for them, you know, I think, um, as well. Two and a half inches by three and a half inches. Okay, there you go. They're the same size as a playing card, pretty much. Yeah, it is a way of showing your art to others. It really is. It, it is. And it's also, I mean, artists use them as, I've known artists to use them as business cards as well. Like, they would pass them on to somebody else and, you know, as like a way of saying, you know, I'm here and that's what I have. That's what I'm doing. So, ladies, I think the next time we get together, we can work in our glue book. So, if you guys haven't made your junk mail journal, get your junk mail journal going. And, um, you know, we can start gluing in it. You can also do yourself one of these little roll-off books like I did and start gluing at it as well with your with your pages, with your little accordion file things. I, I may work on this a little bit and get the button going. I think I need to repaint it one more time with, a, with some um, chalkboard paint because it does scuff up. Bye, Ash. You have to feed your cat out. Oh, awesome. He's no longer waiting. Yeah, well, I'm lucky my dog hasn't started like, um, barking either. So we can work on our glue books. Um, I do have a couple of other projects that I'm working on that I, I'll show you, so show you ladies the next time we're together. I've made, oh, I don't know. I've been making a couple of really cool junk journals I think you guys might be interested in seeing. And, um, Yeah. Bye, Michelle. Well, ladies, I'm sending you a huge, huge hug. Thank you for, and you know, start painting your junk mail today. It's like so fun. I'm, I'm really loving this little junk mail book. So for those of you that didn't make along, you could do it in a very relatively short, short session. So I'm, lo I'm loving it. I'm, I'm looking forward to start gluing in it and putting it this is a better time for you Bridgeline okay well I'm gonna try and keep that in mind well ladies I'm gonna say aloha mahalo nui loa as we say here in Hawaii thank you from my from the bottom of my heart and as always from my heart to your heart I am sending you so 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 much aloha and if you guys have any questions, you know, leave them in the comments below or things that, oh, you want to do a baby flow. That's awesome. We could totally do a baby flow, Sherry. That'd be fun, too. Anyway, big hugs to you, ladies. I'm sending you, as always, from my heart to your heart. So, so, so much aloha. And happy creative day to each and every one of you. All right. Take care.
Hey, Sage. Tasha.